Rich B and AZ here, and this is the Harbour Freight Bubble Balancer that I've had no end of issues with. Um, I'm going to have a closer look at it today, just from a design perspective, just to show all the things that can be wrong with it. I'm going to try and actually balance it like it is a tyre on its own. So first let's have a look at the inside. So this is a die cast aluminum piece, that's why the inside surface is nice and smooth. It should be well balanced because it's die cast, but I see no signs of any grinding done to balance it after it's been made. Uh, and there's no grind ring in there that you may expect on a part that needs to have some precision balance to it. That's the pivot point way down at the bottom. Here I have the head sitting on top of the pivot point which is on the end of this long stem and I need to find out how the distance from the bottom of the head unit on the inside to where the pivot point is to where it is on the outside. So I'm going to mark it. I'm going to dismantle the head unit. I'm going to take the frame off, the tire support frame. First of all, I've got to separate these little snap rings in four places with my snap ring pliers. And it just so happens that that 7 and 3 16 number is the same as the distance from the bottom of this post to not quite the bottom of here, that's 7 and 1 8 but to the chamfer, there's a chamfer here, and that's 7 and 3 16 from the bottom. I'm going to use this to mark the main cone. So right about here. Right there. So that's where the pivot point is on the inside of this cone. So if I do dial indicator measurements, I'll want to do them at this circle. Right, so I've got my laser level turned on and it's hitting mostly on the inside radius, not so much on the chamfer. I've identified this hole as number one. As I move it around you can see it's starting to light up the chamfer. Yeah, and it's lighting up the chamfer quite a bit more now. Now it's starting to vanish as we come back to number one. So that tells me if this is actually balancing. But yeah, this, this is out of balance as it stands. What I need to do to get the laser line to show up here is I have to push down on the opposite side and the laser line will show up. The weight discrepancy seems to be about one one of the rim weights that I have, which is about half an ounce. Yeah, maybe that half ounce is a little heavy because it's, it's dipping below, it's dipping off. So a little less than a half ounce ought to do the balance. So what I've in fact done is I've split the weights, moved them around. And this one, these two positions seem to give about an equal balance. Now, I'm going to adjust the bubble on the top, make that bubble in the middle. Okay, let's get a good view over the top, I think we've got it in the middle. We'll see what happens when I rotate it. Let's see if I can get this directly on. This is half a turn and you can see the bubble's moved off centre already. So I just can't trust the bubble at all. The other problem I have with this unit is the misalignment of these studs, guides, to the holes that they're supposed to go in. See I've got this hole and this hole lined up, but I'll, I'll drop it in. It doesn't change the position much, but look how far off this hole is and how far off this one is. I'll zoom in on that for you. I don't know. Not so good, huh? So when I put this in here, 
and I can get it in by jamming it in. There's going to be a lot of friction in there and I have no idea how this now aligns. Another basic problem. There is another problem with this, I'm not sure if it affects anything or not. But the cone, you can actually see the lighter and darker marks on here. It's rippled. This is not a smooth surface. It's, it's definitely got a ripple in it. So this is my best fit alignment with these pins. As you can see, I can lift it. And they stay because they're jamming. This is the best fit I could get by rotating them. So not only are the studs out of line, but the holes around the base are out of line as well. And I marked it so I can get it back to the best fit. I don't know if you can see this, but that hole within this is pushed that way. This one's pretty well central. I think that one's central. I'm not sure about that one. I think it's pushed towards me. It's pushed this way. Right, so I'm reassembling the, the snap rings. Push it down. Get one over. And just hold it. Now I've just got to put the other four on. Okay, so now I've got the laser line. Again, it's just barely clipping that top edge. Rotate it. Now it's a lot thicker. Quite a bit thicker there. Gone past halfway. And it's almost vanished. So by the time I put this frame back on, it's out of balance again. And looking in at the bubble on the top, I see it's off to the upper left this time. So I can't get a consistent bubble reading either. There's so one more thing I want to share with you. When I checked how perpendicular the head was to the face of the tyre wheel support, it was pretty good as far as I could tell. Uh, but the big problem is, of course, when you put the tyre on, this pushes away which is the same effect as this pushing down. Now, when I go down like this, can you see how much I'm rocking that? Okay, so this frame is not rocking. This is rocking because of the slop in the holes. So it's rocking eh, probably a couple of degrees, two, three degrees. It's quite visible. And what does this thing actually measure? how much a tyre rocks. So can this be trusted? My opinion is the answer is no. Now the point of interest, I've just assembled it backwards and I'm holding it down and now I'm rocking it. I don't know if you can see where the bubble's moving to. I'm sure it's pretty bad. Okay, so I've set it up for one last test and that was the dial indicator. Notice I've got the dial right on the line. I'll zoom in a bit so we can see it a bit better. I've got it set up on my dryer which doesn't move but it is magnetic so I can use a magnetic base. Alright, let's get in there. This is the balanced head unit and I'm now just going to rotate it and let it settle. You can see the dial indicator's moving. Just short of that black mark. So that's right around the 10,000 mark. Now it's rolling all the way back. About where the 35 is. I'll do another rev. Yeah, it looks like it's settling on that 10. I've gone a little bit further this time. About 37. So less than I measured the first time round, which is just wonderful, isn't it? But it's still got a offset, so there's no way this can be trusted. 